30th of the 8th. 2015. We're going to be reading out of the New Testament today. When we get there, when we get there, first we're going to read a few proverbs and have a look what's going on around the place, in the community and the world. We're here at Paradise Now Church in Brisbane. <coughs> Pills and medication been on the news or the, even the radio. The doctors and the pharmacists are shelling out pills and medication that you don't even need and opening ourselves up. Uh, sister, would you like to close that? Oh no, it, it looks like he's coming back, yeah. Opening ourselves up to uh, multiple side effects. I think I've been mentioning mentioning that for the, the last ten years. You know, I'm not a medication man, not really a doctor man. I like the gospel. That's my pill. You know, that's the number one pill I like. And um, the reveling arrangements are being made for the Melbourne Cup coming to a pub near you the world's still going on in their ignorance and the world is still going on in their reveling and rebellion and see it you know the old skipping you know brown girl in the ring thing and and you jump out that's us we're out of it now we're out of the world, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're far away, but we're still here. And uh, this is why we don't have and have to wear and carry all those burdens of the people who are under the sway. We're not under the sway. We're under the grace. We're under the truth. We're under the anointing of the Holy One of Israel. We don't have to carry all that. Even though the devil comes, as long as you have a mind, he will come. But don't mind him. Okay? Let the mind mind you. Okay? And remind you. Yes. So, every time I see the Melbourne Cup coming or I see the festive seasons and the religious seasons I feel sad in my heart it's because Christ is in me oh Jerusalem oh Jerusalem uh, you who kill the prophets eh? you who kill the prophets and stone those who I send to you how I wanted to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings but you would not come Hey? Jesus was lamenting Jerusalem and I lament my community and lament uh, Facebook and my website and YouTube because you just keep telling them and telling them and they just keep stoning you and stoning you or ignoring you and ignoring you to their detriment on their behalf, God has blasphemed. And on your behalf, he is glorified. Because you're going forward speaking the truth. Can someone say amen? amen? Yeah. Satan loves to mock the prophet. It's all through the scriptures. The messenger that the Lord sends. He loves, the devil loves to mock. And uh, if he can get the people to believe the false prophet, well, all well and done, isn't it? It's all good for the devil. And very seldom does the true prophet, prophet ever get to be believed. Once again, to the detriment of the unbeliever. Up around the Townsville area, a young man went through a wholesale car yard uh, 
this week and repeatedly smashed and bashed and damaged endeavoured to wreck many late model cars. Why? Obviously, there's sour grapes somewhere. I, I, as soon as I seen that, I, and, and they had him on footage with a hoodie and, and he just laying into these cars, you know, just smashing windows and bashing them. Oh, there'd be tens of thousands, at least tens of thousands of dollars damage. And uh, as soon as I seen that, the word that came to me was vigilante, you know. Um, people have had enough. They've had enough of rip-off mechanics. They've had enough of rip-off electricians. They've had enough of cowboy builders. They've had enough of cowboy plumbers. And as the days go by, as the days go by, get a little closer. As the days go by, we're going to see dotted and growing vigilante groups because uh, justice is not being done. And the Lord also says to us, as his people, we're not to go that way. We're, we're, we're to accept uh, the carry-on and um, let the Lord deal with vengeance is the Lord's. Amen? Yes, amen and amen. I want to confess today um, that... Uh, if you're not aware of it, I am a kept man, if you don't know what that means, uh, because God keeps me. Yeah? I am a kept man. And uh, God uses people to provide for me. And I've seen it very evident since our, the damage to our car. He just brought people from all around that I, some I don't know. And to provide. And uh, without lying or begging or being immoral. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Peter. And we'll start there with the kept man. 1 Peter. The kept man. True ministers are kept men. They don't lie. They don't to be kept, they don't beg, they don't steal, they're not immoral in order to gather financial support or support. 1 Peter, we're going to go there, in, and we're going to go to chapter 1. And let's just go down there to verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed. Ready to be revealed in the last time. Right? Kept by the power of God. Look, that's a great encouragement that we need to hear. That the true saints are kept by the power of God. Through faith. It's up to you. It's up to me if we want to be kept. If we want to be preserved. We need to take faith and continue to have faith in the Son of God. Can someone say Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you got Psalm 23. We know Psalm 23. It's good to read over it. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Kept again. Kept again. Lays me down in the green pastures, steers me beside the still waters, um, leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, and um, prepares a table before mine enemy and I. Kept, a kept man. Matthew 6, can we go there please? Matthew 6. Matthew 6. I get a little closer to you as the days go by. Matthew 6. And the verse is 33, which says in my Bible, Therefore do not worry about 
tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Hey? That's for those who are seeking the kingdom. Verse uh, 33, I should say. Let's read verse 33 again. But, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And then I read verse 34 first before I shouldn't have. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Those who seek the kingdom will be kept by the king of the kingdom. We will be kept people. He will look out for us. Seek. First. We see the new covenant there again. Seek first. First. He's always first. Colossians that one eighteen. He must have the preeminence. He must be first. This will contribute to the message today that we're going to look at. And um, Acts 6 4, we know what goes on there. The minister gives himself to prayer and the word of God. And the Lord will look after the rest. 1 Corinthians 9.14, a kept man. 1 Corinthians 9.14, very clearly what God says there. Okay. 1 Corinthians 9.14. A lot of people run around saying, oh, you know, you're this and that, you know, you need to go and uh, get a job and do this and blah, blah, blah. Look, they don't know what they're talking about. They, they are ignorant people. 1 Corinthians 9. And the verse is 14. Even so, the Lord, not the manager of Kmart, not some jealous whinging pew warmer. The Lord, creator, commanded that the preacher who preaches the gospel should live from the gospel. Should make a living, not a sandwich, and not a killing, but a living. Can someone say amen? This is the real deal. This is not some Bible college concoction. Everything I read this morning, 1 Peter 1, 5, Psalm 23, Matthew 6, 33, 34, Acts 6, 4, 1 Corinthians 9, 14. Love it. Let's go to Proverbs 22, 10, please. On a different note, Proverbs. These are some of the proverbial sayings that Brother Shadrach, Sister Hannah, find for morning, uh, morning tea. 22.10 in my Bible says, Cast out the scoffer. Cast out the scoffer. And I'll just get my other Bible here. Proverbs 22.10 says, Cast out the scoffer. And, and contention will leave. Yes, strife and reproach will cease. Someone in the fellowship who's a scoffer, they're best to move on. They're best to go their way. And then contention in the atmosphere and strife will go with them. Because that's all they have. A scoffer is an unbeliever. A scoffer is a, a doubter. A mocker. Cast out the scoffer. Let them go. If they, they, want, they don't want to believe, let them go. Don't bring a bad smell in the place. 
Eh? And all the strife and contention, and best to let them move on. Let them go. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And uh, let us read Proverbs 23. And the verse in Proverbs 23 is verse 4. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. And a good explanation of that is the next verse. What, what, oh, what do you mean by that? Verse 5. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, then they fly away like an eagle towards heaven. You see that? He, verse verse uh, 5 elaborates on verse 4. That's why we don't waste all our time with trying to make money and gather material goods. Because they have that way of deserting us. Do not overwork to be rich. That's why people overwork. It's all about money. It is. That's why they're overworking. To get more money, more money. Like the rich fool. And he's lying in bed saying, well, I've got a lot now. He's counting it all up. And you know how you lie in bed and think about things. And, and the Lord said, hey, stupid. i got to call on your soul tonight. Now where's all your money going to go? <laughs> I like it. I love Jesus. You know, I love the way he does things. I like the way he talks. He's a shirt fronter, you know. It's just lovely. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. That's the key, isn't it? We're not to lead on our own understanding. Oh, I think this. And if I do that and I'll do this, you know, and we're just like the old Muslim, uh, uh, you know, crazy John. He's going to do a lot, wasn't he? He said, oh, well, I, I want to be a billionaire now. And... A week later, he died. A week later. They found him on a footpath, dead. As he was doing the uh, Olivia Newton John, you know, that's good. Busy come, busy come. I want to get busy come. Busy come. Boom! Lord just went boom! Next, found him on the grass. And if only he would have had a mobile phone. I mean, he only had a company of mobile phones. Didn't he? he had a mobile phone company. Yes, I'm dying. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Hey? Okay? Seats. I mean, even a person's own understanding would tell them it's just not right. It, that's not living. The overworking thing takes takes its toll on your body and your mind and your relationships and everything else. Will, will you set your eyes on that which is not? You know all those new houses out there? They're not. All those things when you go outside the door and have a look, they're not. Paul said the same thing. And Peter, they said, don't put your eyes on what you can see. Because it's not. It is not. I mean, it is not. Set your eyes on that which is not. Riches, riches, certainly make themselves wings and fly away. Somehow, they're here today and gone tomorrow. Somehow. We're rich today and broke tomorrow. Just the way it goes. Everyone said amen. Okay. 
Let's move in. Let's move right along now. We go into our message today in the writings of Romans. And we're going to be reading out of Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, I'll just start in verse 11. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than... When we first believed, Romans 13, 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk properly as in the day. Not in revelry and drunkenness, lewdness, lust, strife, envy. But put on the Lord Jesus the Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfil its lust. Tell of a message today. Flesh and spirit. Flesh and spirit. Right? Make no provision for the lust of the flesh. It will be instrumental in damning us, damming up the fresh waters of the Lord and cutting us off from the fresh waters and damning us in hell. Fire eternal can someone say amen okay. there's a battle going on right now in our being with the flesh and the spirit and in the middle is the soul and it's in our hands to choose which way we're going to walk. Okay? So we must remove the Adamic clothing. We must put off the Adamic clothing. We must derobe. It's the biggest problem that has come I believe to the pulpit of churches worldwide that they have these altar calls and they come to the Lord and they make a confession and but they go away with their endemic clothes on still. They haven't derobed. They haven't been told they have to derobe. They haven't been told that uh, the soul or the mind, the will and the emotions are going to have to make decisions as of that day pro-Jesus. Right? It's not all done and dusted in a prayer. It's not saved by grace. It's saved by grace through faith. We have to take faith. Can someone say amen? Hey. We, we have the Holy Spirit and we can uh, put to death the works of the flesh that grieve the Lord Jesus. Let's turn in Ephesians, please. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and have a look there. Okay? This is a, a message in humility, really, today. A message in humility. I tell you, it's a humbling thing to walk with Jesus. But other people would argue with that. Okay? It's the most humbling thing a human being can do. 
I mean, sitting in the street with the poor is not really to be compared with walking with Jesus. <laughs> uh, in the light of his word, can someone say amen? Um, Ephesians, I said, didn't I? I'm too busy talking, I better shut up. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to go to verse 21. Verse 21 says in Ephesians 4, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, put off, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, the old woman, which grows corrupt, According to the deceitful lusts, Ephesians 4.23 now, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man. Hey? Put on the new man, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. That we're to be like Jesus in true righteousness and true holiness. Because there's righteousness out there and there is holiness out there, but only Jesus can produce in us true righteousness and true holiness. Only Jesus can do that. That's why it says very clearly in Ephesians 4, 21, if indeed you have heard him and if you have been taught by him. See, you're being taught by Jesus today. I am not Jesus. But what Paul is saying is if you have his doctrine. So, if the minister is going to start off with a Bible college doctrine, you could end up anywhere. You could end up anywhere and believe in anything. Because the man's not gifted. Ephesians 4 and the verses 11. He himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers and evangelists. Hey? He's the one. And then it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Christ. Hey? He gave. The Lord God Almighty gave some. Gave gifts. Gave some to be. He himself gave. Some. He gave it to them. You're listening. It's not something we go out and get. It's something that's given. It's not a Bible college. I paid $3,000 for the cause. Or some theological mumbo jumbo. It is simplicity at its best. The anointing breaks the yoke. Hey? The anointing breaks. you got people out there saying they're this and that and they're prophets and thus says the Lord. And they're saying everything. This is what the Lord said, but there's no room for a comment. You can't comment. Why? You can't ask the question. When the scriptures say clearly, be prepared to give defense of what you believe in time of question. When people question you why you believe what you believe. Can you say amen? Oh, no. No. We have to know the word of God and we can't know the word of God unless we have derobed and we've taken it all off. Every bit of it. No keeping anything of the old. 
Paul the Apostle counted it everything he had that was considered as, as gain or profit, as done to know one specific way and doctrine, which was Jesus. Right? And we know when Jesus came, they said he got another teaching. He did have another teaching. He had his teaching. But they had their own teaching. Right? That's why Paul mentions here, in verse 20 of Ephesians 4, look at it with me, then you might remember where it is. Verse 20, But you have not so learned Christ. Eh? There's certain things we learn, and we know it's either from Christ or it's not. Eh? If we have been taught by Christ, I tell you what, we will know very clearly it is of him. We have the spirit in us of Christ that gives us the witness it is of Christ and that it is the teaching and it is what it says it is and the scripture will do what it says it will do. If you repent, you will be forgiven. You will be cleansed. You will be delivered. You will be empowered. You will be... Above that, you will be not an overcomer, but more than an overcomer. And then you'll be able to lead others and teach them how to overcome and guide them because you have been taught by Christ, because you have humbly received the word of God. And that takes faith. Can someone say amen? I have a message today. Flesh and spirit. And the soul is smack bang in the middle there. And uh, we can go back to the way of the flesh, which is Adamic. We know that Eve brought this whole package of the lust of the flesh because she was lusting after the fruit, wasn't she? That she was not to touch, but she was lusting after it. Oh, it looks good. And it's all looks. Well, we just read before about looking uh, uh, at things that don't last and grow wings and fly away. It's all all so much entangled and all rooted together, the Adamic and the Messianic, two different roads, the flesh and the spirit, two different roads, the soul <clears throat> in the middle making the decisions, which way am I going to go, who am I going to obey, who am I going to glorify, who am I going to build? Am I going to knock down the spirit man? Am I going to deny the spirit of the Lord? Or am I going to subject myself to the spirit of the Lord? Romans, can we go there please? Romans 8. And the verse is... Romans 8. Verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. You will die. Adam and Eve died. Their relationship with God died. A lot of people are living according to the flesh out there, but they're still alive, aren't they? You with me? But they're dead. But they are alive. As Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Those who are dead to him. Those who are not subject to him. Let them bury the dead. Those who are not his. We are alive. When Jesus comes, you're going to look for the alive. And those who are alive and on the earth. They will be taken up in the air. Those who have a living, loving relationship with Jesus on the day he comes will go. But the church at Sardis was dead because they looked back to the old man and they went back like the Galatians. They started afresh in the spirit but then went back. They couldn't go and live happily without their traditions and their cultures and their Jewish uh, rituals and 
going back to days, months, seasons, and all the rest of it, and stitching it on. And it's not good. It grieves the spirit away. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Who has deceived you? Who has deluded you in that you would go back that way? Have I laboured in vain? Or what? Can someone say amen? amen? Yes. Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not in debt to the flesh. We're indebted to the Lord. We've been bought with a price. The blood of the Lamb. Can someone say amen? Be like Jesus in true righteousness and true holiness. Not a form of holiness. Denying the power thereof. A form. They have a form of, of godliness. A form of holiness. But deny the power thereof. And righteousness. There's a lot of people that think that they do the right thing out there in the churches and in the world. They think they have righteousness. It's not true righteousness. There's only one true righteousness and that is the Christ. He is exact, perfect. What he says goes. What he says is. He is. Therefore we are. He is the I am he. I am the way, he said. I am the truth. I am the life. We can have none of that without him. We can do nothing of any substantial weight for his kingdom or for ourselves. Can someone say amen? Yes. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Time of message today. Flesh and spirit. It's a humbling thing, isn't it? 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. Know this, that in the last days perilous times will come and the flesh will rise up. Is that what it says? No, that's what I'm saying. And the Adamic nature will be evident. The old man's nature will be evident. In the last days, clear as. 2 Timothy 3, 2. Men and women will be lovers of themselves. Eve. Lovers of money. Lovers <coughs> of money. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good traitors, headstrong, traitors, traitors. They're with you one minute and they're gone. They don't even say they're going. They're just traitors. This is the last day. They don't tell you nothing. There's no respect or nothing. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of holiness. Someone say amen. Actually, let me say a form of righteousness and a form of holiness. Because that's what godliness is. A combination of righteousness and holiness. <coughs> godliness is righteousness, holiness and judgment. Headstrong, haughty traitors. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the Holy Ghost. Denying the leading of the Holy Ghost. Denying the Spirit. Rather go in the way of the flesh. Rather than go the way of the Spirit. And their mind has not been transformed to the place where they say, I'll go the way of the Spirit. Because they're disobedient. They want their own will. They don't want to do Father's will. <clears throat> they can't know the true doctrine. They're not taught by Jesus. 
John 7, 17, if you want to do Father's will, you will know the true doctrine and you will be taught by Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, through the earthen vessel. Can someone say amen? amen. Yeah. Flesh and spirit. We're in a battle. There's a battle going on. There's a fight going on. And it, 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 it's a stronger fight than you and the devil and demons. It's a fight within yourself. Of the flesh and the spirit, and we choose. We only. Where if you or I end up in the fires of hell, you cannot blame anyone except you, because you made the choice. Whether you want to go with the spirit or you want to go with the flesh. Whether you want to be a Sarah or an Eve, or you want to be a Ahab or an Abraham. Can someone say Amen? I love a message today, flesh and spirit. It's only when we totally derobe, clothe ourselves in the hosannic humility, okay, that it all becomes afternoon delight. Okay. It becomes something we're relishing when we derobe. We put off the old man. There's a transformation going on. And with the transformation comes the impartation of the power of God. And as we are transforming and as we are surrendering and humbling ourselves, the Lord empowers more, more, more. And we reach that level of overcoming and we go on to be more than overcomers. Teaching others then to do and to observe the things which he has taught you to do, which is what I'm doing now, which is the Great Commission. Can someone say amen? Flesh and spirit. Hey, that hosannic humility, that the, the struggle then between the flesh and the spirit then turns to a, an act of love when we willfully derobe. Hey? Examples all through Old Testament and New Testament where men and women hung, hung on to just a little bit of something that displeased the Lord and it was to their own detriment in the end. There has to be new wine in new skins. It cannot be. Look, these churches out there today, they're endeavouring to put new wine into old skins it doesn't work you'll just backslide you'll just go uh, a wall you'll be end up a traitor you'll end up uh, compromising or lukewarm or it has to be a full surrender right? moses his departure from egypt and everything, the great things that he had, you could see with the eye, all those treasures and riches that he knew by the unctioning of God Almighty, they would fly away, but what he was laying hold of will never fly away. You'll just fly away to be with him. All that is in heaven. The golden streets, the, the brethren of Christ, the Abrahams and Moses and Sarahs and Daniels will all be there. Hey? And so the mind is seated there in between the flesh and uh, the spirit, hypothetically speaking. And in that mind, uh, the, in that soul, is the mind, the will, and the emotions. 
And it's all our choosing. And as I've said in the recent weeks, there's no excuse acceptable. We can't uh, say, uh, I'm struggling. The, the struggle is over when you willfully and lovingly surrender to Jesus. And we give up our life. Can someone say amen? amen. Today, hey? Otherwise, it's going to be evident, isn't it? 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. A form of holiness. A form of righteousness. But no, no, no. Romans 14. Uh, Romans 13, I should say. Verse 14 says very clearly. Put on the Lord Jesus the Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its life. When you put on Jesus, there's no provision left. There's no room for the devil. There's no room for him to tell you or ask you or insinuate or influence you to do anything. That's how we make no room. We've shut every door. When Christ, when we put on Christ, and I rejoice that the Lord has made that available. No one else can do it. Buddha, Muhammad, there's no religion in the world. Every one of them have their own excuses. Why that cannot be done. Every one of them, Roman Catholicism, every religion of man has excuses why you can't live holy or be perfect. There's only one way and one teacher that says you can be holy and you can be perfect even as he is perfect and holy. There's only one who said that and that's Jesus. It's a glorious life. It's not of the earth. It's of the heavens and it's of uh, heaven and so on. It's of the doctrine that came from heaven. Jesus. Father's word. Jesus' word. The only word that the Holy Spirit backs up is the truth. Can someone say amen? Amen. Right? Wonderful is he. So, the removing of the Adamic clothing, it also can be seen in looking upon him. Looking, up, looking upon Jesus. Right? Let's go to the writings of Peter, or I should say Hebrews. The weight will live. Right? The weight will live and we will be lifted above the situation. Looking upon him. Hebrews, you should know where that is now. Looking unto him. Hebrews 12. Verse 3, I'll make it verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of Father. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Right? And then Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race. That is set before us. I read verse 1 last because when you read it in that way, when you read verse 2 and then verse 3 and then go back to verse 1, it's easier to understand. Yeah? Easier to understand about the weight lifting that the weight will lift. And the sin will be no longer so tasty when we look to him 
when we start to consider what he suffered for us, the weight is lifted. I know when I'm having hard times and I um, things aren't going my old man's way, that can be a little bit ir irritating, you know, when the flesh isn't getting their way. I consider Jesus, author and the finisher. He knows. He knows every move. He knows everything about the devil and, and us and our character. He knows it all. He's the author and the finisher of the phone. Hey? Author and finisher of our faith. I think he knows what he's talking about. I think he knows how to take the weight that the man can't. He knows we can't bench press it. I'll get that. And he's standing right there to take that weight the moment we're looking at him. The moment we consider him. He takes the weight and the sin. If you're thinking upon sinning and then if you consider him and you start to to praise him and thank Jesus and just confess his name, even, that temptation of the evil one will take flight. Automatically. We also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight And sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance. Okay. We have to endure. We're not going to endure if we surrender to the flesh. We're not going to endure if our mind isn't handed over to the Lord. We say, your will, Lord, not mine. Hey? And when we say that, it's our emotions and, and, and our whole being is put at rest. Because we've given up our life, haven't we? That's truly giving up your life. When you hand over your mind and you say, Lord, I can't afford to lean on my mind because my old mind, it says this, it's looking at things that are material, it's looking at this world, it's looking at everything that would ensnare me and would be a weight to me. We must put on the mind of Christ. Make no provision. Put on the mind. Say, so, oh, put on the mind of Christ. That would be difficult. I just do what the scriptures say. <laughs> That's putting on the mind of Christ. There's no buts about it. There's no, oh, but I think this. Oh, but I think that. You try and butt and goat, uh -uh. goat and butt away everything that the Lord has asked. Until there's nothing left but stinking religion that you're miserable in. And you'd rather be at the pub, or you'd rather be at the markets, or you'd rather be at the gym, or you'd rather be somewhere else, or you'd rather be at the football game <coughs> rather than fellowship with your brethren, or you'd rather be somewhere else. That is not a transformed mind. Look, the pastor should have to shovel you out of the church on Sunday. If you're real. He should have to shovel you out. He can't get rid of you. You're too busy relishing and, and rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now Jesus want to sit at the table and just keep drinking tea and, 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 and just keep praising the Lord and testifying of the weak and, and, and just saying, yeah, man, we've got it all, you know. We got Father and Son and Holy Ghost. Ages and brethren in the word of 
We got it all. Let's press on. Right? Don't be dismayed. Oh, don't be down. Because we're fighting this fight for a crown that will not perish or grow. Great cloud of witnesses waiting out there cheering you on. You know? And you can hear them when you're in the spirit. You can hear them. I'm telling you, you can hear the angels on that trumpet. You know what I mean? And you're wrestling with someone there on the street and they're saying this and saying that. Next minute, bang, the Lord gives you a word and you just speak it to them. Next minute you hear. And it's the angels partying. Great cloud of witnesses. Say, come on, man. Press forward. Hallelujah. Hey? We got grace and faith and joy and peace. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. We got it all. When we take those garments off, we got it all. But otherwise, there's that schizophrenic thing happening, you know? It's sort of like, <laughs> you know? Five different people in one week. <laughs> yeah. It's still a bit bewildering, you know. You're never alone with the schizophrenic, are you? That's what they say. Is that you got to have that one mind? See, I like that. That's what I liked about the prophets. They had that one mind, you know. They had that mind of Yahweh. One mind. They were focused and zeroed in. They went, oh, we're affiliating with this one and affiliating with that one and affiliating with that one. And, and, and they still don't have their film. They're just affiliated with every filly in town. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? And they got their minds all over the place. It's not one one-minded as father is with jesus and as we are with jesus so we will be too with father if we want to obey jesus then father and jesus will come and make their abode in us can you say amen, amen. john yes 14 i think 23 my memory serves me well if my memory serves me well. 1423. John. I was right. Thank you, Jesus. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And then my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him and her. Can you say amen? Uh -huh. Hey? If anyone loves me, he will choose the messianic. Anyone loves me, he will derobe. It's an insult to keep anything of your old man because you think, oh, well, Jesus, you know, he's just not cutting the mustard. We can't keep anything of the old man, not even the belt. You know, get rid of it. I used to wear a, a studded belt, you know, and I, like on my hips sort of thing and a big buckle. You know, like a bison at once, about that round. And brass, you know. And I sort of just let the shoulder hang down a bit. And, you know what I mean? I say, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? They sort of thought, well, you know, the ladies thought I was pretty cool because I was shy or something, you know. But I was just a devil, you know. <laughs> I was just the devil in disguise, oh, yes, you, are. you know what I mean? And I was sort of there, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And they say, oh, he's shy. And I go, <laughs> where were we? Yeah, that's right. Um, 
the belt, you know, the studded belt. And, you know, made sure there was plenty of room to see the apps and uh, the abs and all the other appointments. And, uh, but we have to put all that off, you know. It was the first thing I'd done when I came to the Lord. I got rid of my wardrobe, all of it. The one singlet and the one pair of jeans, you know. <laughs> you can't go wearing clean clothes, <laughs> riding motorcycles, <laughs> and uh, and the stutter belt with the buffalo, you know. And it just had to be a de-robing fully. Materially and spiritually, mentally, literally, derobing, so that we're then able to put on that hosannic humility. As Peter, if we go to Peter and have a look there, let's just go over to Peter. Right? Time of message today flesh and spirit. Flesh and spirit. 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with pride and arrogance. And, uh, I mean, humility. For God has nothing to do with the proud and he loves to give power to humble people who submit to his word. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty doctrine of Yahweh that he may exalt you in due time above all your problems and sins, casting all your care upon him, for he's the one that really cares for you <laughs> at the end of the day. And verse 8, 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, don't be drunk, stay away from the pub, and... Be vigilant for me, because the devil is looking for you. You're on his most wanted list. And he walks around like a roaring lion, but he's not. He's a tabby cat. Because I read in his power void at the cross. Um, verse 9, 1 Peter 5, 9. Resist him simply by obeying me. And be steadfast in that, um, in the doctrine. Uh, in the doctrine and uh, knowing that your brothers and sisters are experiencing uh, the same uh, attacks wherever they are, may be in the world and verse 10 Hebrews 5 uh, I should say 1 Peter 5 10 and may the God of all power uh, who called us to his eternal glory through the Christ after you have suffered a while, and a thousand years is a day to the Lord, <laughs> perfect you and establish you, strengthen you, and um, settle you. See that? We become more settled and strengthened and established as we humble ourselves. And all the way through there, it just... Um, all humble, isn't it? Starting at verse 5, be clothed with humility. And then you go on to verse 6, and then humble again. Humble yourself. And then verse 7, humble again. Cast in your cares on him. That's a pretty humbling thing, you know. That's a humbling thing. Cast your cares on someone you can't see with your naked eye. You feel a bit foolish. You know, especially when people that say to you, oh, Oh, yeah, you know, shut up with that Jesus garbage, will you? You know, it's all rubbish. And you're humbled in proclaiming that, no, I cast all my cares on him. Well, you can't see anyone, you know, and he's, he's dead, died a long time ago, you know. And then verse 8, be sober. Oh, that's humbling, isn't it? It's humbling to be sober and serious in a drunken world. Right? Even those who don't drink are drunks. They're non-drinking drunks. In other words, they're all over the They're all ha, 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 he, he. They're all silly as a wheel. 
nutty as a fruitcake. Right? They are, because they're drunk. They're drunk with futility. But we are the sober people. We've been sobered up. And I was the biggest drunk of all. I was the biggest sinner of all. But the Lord sobered me up. You know? I just had one drink of the Word of God and I was sober. Just like that. Powerful. It's a powerful medicine, the gospel. One drink. Junk. Sober. Totally different person. Right? Putting on the messianic character now. And then uh, verse 10. Suffering. Humbling thing to suffer. Oh, humble, 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 humble. Whole message today. Humble. It's a humbling thing to choose someone else's way than your way. You know, because we're all so full of pride, you know. Ah, you follow me, man. You know, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. No, I follow Jesus. Following Jesus goes totally against every human being who are a demon. Did you know that? Totally. It's all about putting on clothing, isn't it? And clothing, I mean, you look at clothing and you, you think of colour. You think of size. You, you think of, uh, of style and make and fabric and trend. But well, we put on Christ. Our, our clothing is white. Spotless white. Our our size, one size fits all. It's the one doctrine, the one message for black, white, tall, fat, skinny, old, young. One doctrine, one size fits all. That's how genius, how awesome our Lord is. Whether they're children, adults, whether they're... Uh, uh, Ethiopian or when they're blown out fully, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Full blown, half blown, fly blown, it doesn't matter. One size fits all in the Lord's kingdom. Can you say amen? It's the one doctrine, the one message. There's no other way. And our style is... Battle dress. It's battle dress style. Hey? Christos cams. Because we're soldiers. And we're fighting a fight. And there could be casual things. And it won't be us. And the make of our clothing is not Nike, it's heavenly. Someone say amen. amen. And the fabric is holiness. Holiness, holiness. And what about the trend? Well, we don't have to change, it's infinite. It's just it's just it, you know? You know, when you roll up, you just roll up. You know what I mean? I don't have to bring anything with me, you know? So when I roll up, hey, I'm just here, man, it's just me, you know? Me and Christ. You got everything there, fully furnished, self contained unit, ready for good works, brand new vehicle. No spot or blemishes. Manual of Emmanuel in the glove box. Plastic still on the doors. Can you say amen? That's us. Hey? That's us. Flesh and spirit. The flesh life is beggarly. It's old. It's it, it's got holes in it. It's it's faulty. It's 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 not satisfying. It, it's not pleasing. It, it's dangerous. It's self harming. It's got all the traits of Satan in the regions of hell. The old man, the Adamic man. We, we, we choose the fear of the Lord. 
And the fear of the Lord is to hate all evil, to hate everything that violates the instruction of the Lamb. Can someone say amen? We take on the curriculum. The curriculum is a course of action. We take on the curriculum of the Christ so that we can run the race to the very end. That Paul fought the fight, this very fight, he fought it. But it was the powers of darkness, host of the air. He ran the race to the very end and, and kept the fight. There's no way you can fight or run the race unless you keep the fight. If you keep the fight, you will endure, you will run, you will fight successfully, you will win, you will fight the fight, and you will overcome, and you'll be more than an overcomer, and everybody said. Amen. So we have to shake off that, that character that we read. We don't want no part of that. Anything. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, we don't want none of that to be identified with us. We don't want our name to have any of that of that list. We, we don't want any connection. We want the character of Christ to come through and up. We, we, we can't afford to... Um, to be liars and selfish and, and um, uh, doing the devil's bidding and, and going the devil's way and whether it's for self-gain or choosing as they did down the road the, the prophets and the ministers choosing the wages of unrighteousness knew, knew the right way knew the way the spirit leads we know the way the Spirit leads. Paul said to the Galatians, you know very well what you're doing. What's going on? You've gone back. It's no good. See, it, it, that just shows you that what they love most. When people, they move on, they go their way, they, they, they love something else more. You know what? I can tell you now, I do not love anyone or anything more than the word of the Lord Jesus. I could, look, you could offer me a trip or a holiday anywhere in the world, all expenses paid. I don't care if it's in uh, Italy or Rome or Las Vegas. You can have that or you can just have a hallelujah time with real brethren for one day. Or you go on this holiday for a month. All your bills paid at home while you're there. Every single thing. I'd say I'll take the day. Hallelujah in the place. <laughs> Glory. Because it takes you further. In the spirit, it takes you far further. That's like a man who's gifted. And, it, and God has anointed him and appointed him and gifted. He can take you far further into victory and the unseen than any theological Bible college brain-powered academic could ever. I've had people come to meetings and say to me, I learnt more in one meeting than I did in 12 months in my old church. More in one meeting. How can that be? It's only by the Spirit. The glory belongs to Jesus. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. You see, the Lord does not take you into a situation of spiritual starvation. The scripture is clear. He brought me into the banqueting house and the banner over me is his love. Right? And when you're under that 
anointing and you're feeding on a teaching of Jesus, you will feel more love than you ever have. Because he brought you into the banqueting house. You're not trying to sieve through boxes and empty cartons to find something to eat. Like someone at a rubbish dump. And I've met a lot of people who go to a lot of meetings over the years. You know, we did, they go to a local church, but they've got to go to all sorts of meetings to get more because they're starving. They're not fed spiritually. Right? The true pastor, he will feed you with understanding and knowledge that is not from this earth. It's from the Spirit. It's from the Holy Ghost. And he knows what to feed who, when and how. He knows everything because he is God. We're stuck with some religious, rigid religious Bible college teaching. Dead, dusty, dormant defeatism. We're not going to go in there. We're just going, oh, well, I'm struggling, you know. I'm trying my best. He, they ruined my life. Oh, please. Stinking Calvinistic robots. They have no will. They don't have any will. But God give us a free will to choose the flesh or choose the spirit. Choose for yourself, Joshua said back then. That's in the Old Testament. Who are you going to follow? Your fleshy traditions and cultures and your fathers and forefathers? Or are you going to follow the Spirit? Are you going to follow my God? Fire by night, cloud by day. Which one are you going to follow? You're going to be led by the Spirit because these are the true sons of God. Hey? Not those who keep the Sabbath. Oh, we keep the Sabbath. Oh, go away. You're in the shadow. You go and play in the shadows. I'm in the substance. Right? Oh, we got a tie. Otherwise, I can't buy me a Mercedes. No, you don't have to tie. If anyone listen, you don't have to tie. You don't have to give anything. You don't even have to give a love offering. Because <laughs> if you don't, you have no love anyway. No. <laughs> now, come on. Offering, son. Give your offering and forever hold your crumbs. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to do that to be saved. But it's just something that you do do. And when you do it, you do it well. And do you remember what mum said now? Do what you do, do well, boy. Do what you do, do well. When you do anything, you've got to do it well. You've got to do it heartily. You've got to do it from the heart. Sacrificially. Someone asks you for a dollar, you always give them two, don't you? I do. Or maybe more. Hey? Someone asks me for a smile, I give them a hug too. You're with me. It's a double package, eh? double blessing. Just make sure you clean the teeth. Anyway, yes, yes, yes. We put on the Christ, the Lord Jesus. In so doing, I'm going to finish up in a minute. In so doing, you're not going to be praised and worshipped. You're going to be crowned with thorns and whipped and laughed and mocked at. And you're going to be, you know, wearing the same as Christ war and <clears throat> all who followed him. Paul, Peter, John boiled in oil and hung upside down on the cross and considered the off and scum of the earth. You're not going to be saying, oh, oh, here comes Paul. Oh, wow, everyone praises. Oh, yeah. No, they say, oh, there's that idiot again. He's back again. And those who desire to live in the Spirit, 
will suffer persecution. Those who desire to live godly, God is spirit. When you live godly, you're living in the spirit. When you walk in the truth, you know it and you walk in it. Up to the light you have. Up to the light we have. That's how we'll be judged. Up to the light we have. When you're walking in the word, because the word is spirit. It can't be anything else because God is spirit. The word I speak to you is spirit. And God is spirit. And he's looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. Can someone say amen? amen. In the Holy Ghost, led by the Holy Ghost, and the truth, the word. So, when we put on Christ, we will, no doubt, they will know there's something about you and they will treat you accordingly. You will be persecuted. Everywhere you go. Unless you get in the flesh for a minute and, that, and then you go back to the car and, whoo, got out of that one. And the Lord says, no, you never. Because I've seen what you did and you're ashamed of me. And I'll be ashamed of you. On the judgment day, can someone say amen? We don't get away with anything. Jesus ain't blind. He ain't deaf. And he ain't mute. If we're going to compromise our walk just so we can save our own hide, it's the flesh. It's not the spirit. It's the old man. Because the old man was born that way. The old man was born to look after number one. And that's what Adamic parents teach their children. You look after number one. But the Lord Jesus says, greater love is no one to lay down their life for their friend. Lay down your life for your friend. Can someone say amen? Hey? Isn't that wonderful? What the Lord Jesus does for each and every one of us? He gives us light, doesn't he? In the darkness. So the title of our message today, Flesh and spirit, which one we're going to choose? Right? There's a battle going on. You have a will and you will choose. You can't blame anyone if you find yourself in hell for eternity. You will choose. You'll make your choice. And, and, and you got to let the Lord transform your mind through the word. Willingly hand yourself over to the Lord every time and every situation that we face. Can someone say amen today? Amen. And amen and amen.